Welcome back, one and all, to MCOM. Welcome back to MCOM, and for the first time for you, and the fourth time for me, welcome to Operation Lazy Apollo. As you join me with soldiers, Garav, and Magical Trevor, Nero, Mello, Tamerlane, as well as... Specialist rank Rocketeer Potato. For the first time on this campaign, we're seeing a Rocketeer, we're seeing an infantry, we're seeing an assault. Anyway, this is our first official UFO splashdown of our campaign. Small UFO. It's, it's taken quite the course across this farmland. You see, it skidded all the way up to here. And this is a farm. You can't really see much of it at the moment, it's utter destruction in our line of sight, but there is a fully intact barn up to the north, if we are facing north, up to the top of the screen and then to the left there's various tractors and farm equipment, there's a road down here to the left. Now as I said, this is the fourth time I've been playing this, I've played this exact mission, because there's been technical difficulties, like every other single time. First time the uh, video uh, uh, corrupted, Second time it just stopped recording for whatever reason, I must have pressed the hotkey by mistake. And then third time was just 10 minutes ago and the recording just wasn't working at all. So, fingers crossed, we're going to rush through this one, it's going to be perfect. See the other three times I've played through this mission, it went utterly perfect. I grabbed all the meld, I killed all the guys, we didn't take any damage, Potato hit all his rockets perfectly. It was amazing. And now, in the interest of full disclosure, because I've played this map a, uh, a few times before, because I've played this mission, not this map, a few times before, I know exactly what aliens are on it, although I don't know where they are. Because when you go to restart mission, using this option, I think that's a long war exclusive there, being able to restart the mission from the menu. Um, when you do that, the, the pods change position, and the meld changes position, so I know there's a pod of sectoids, a pod of drones, and whatever's inside the UFO up here. I don't know where they are. So it'll still be easier for me, in all honesty. But okay. it's, it's by no means a foregone conclusion. So Nero, just sprinting up immediately. The quickest way to the UFO is obviously just round this right-hand side. The safest way to the UFO is round the left-hand side. And you'll see what I'm doing when I make my next move Magical Trevor. Move I am going position. straight down the middle because life is too short and clearly my hard drive is just not good enough to handle such long recordings so we need to get a move on uh, what we need to do with Garav and Potato for the first time given that we've got infantry and rocketeers I'll explain as we go you need to get these two into position early on so full cover for Garav um, that's probably a really bad position actually I'll move him back around there if you get him into posi position early on you can leverage his special ability, which is light him up as an infantry. He can fire twice on the same turn, as long as he doesn't move. So you get him into position, he can just be like a steady turret. Bang, bang. Two kills. Similarly, Potato needs to get into position early, so I'm only getting moving him over That's here. Because this is how rockets work in Long War. If Potato was to fire a rocket just now, as you can see, it's not the vanilla XCOM system of this rocket has a 90% chance to hit exactly a 10% chance to go wildly off course. There is such a thing as a rocket scatter, which, you know, I, I was once in, you know, a university maths, or a math, if you're American, mathematics, if you can actually speak properly, which I can't, but I actually did university maths for about three months before dropping out. I think this is standard deviation, where um, there's like a 99% chance that the rocket will either be inside the radius you see or within a four tile spread there's like a one percent chance that will go outside that. Um, standard deviation is like taught in high school though isn't it so I'm, I, I really had no business doing university maths but anyway so there's like a one percent chance that it would go completely out of that scatter radius as well and uh, we're with potato here yeah we're not gonna really test that to be honest so that what this scatter and what this rocket range depends on is a is the rocketeer's aim now potato has 77 aim but he's also got a um his aim is reduced because he's already moved this turn it's like um 
It's like snipers with snapshot. They get uh, what's the opposite of a bonus? It's I'm, I'm I'm thinking it's malice, but then nobody actually ever uses the word malice apart from that one French game that I can't remember the name of, and everybody mocked it for being weird. But I quite liked it. Anyway, you get an aim malice for moving in a turn. But what Potato can do, and why we've put him in position, bring us all the way back to the main point, is that Potato can steady his aim. It gives him plus 20 aim so long as he doesn't move next turn. And that will really help the accuracy and the range of his rocket. Anyway, we've only got the one battle scanner, so we're not going to use it at the moment. We're going to save it. And we're going to overwatch everyone else. There's the drones I mentioned. Now, Potato's rocket, just to show you now. If we were to fight roughly the same place, the, the scatter's already down to 1.1. That's a hell of a lot more reliable. And then look at the range. He can't even see what he's shooting there, but he can still hit it relatively accurately. So that is why it's necessary for Rocketeer to get in position. As it is. This, this area of the farm has terrible cover. You've got the odd full bit of cover there up here, but it's few and far between. If we really wanted to be safe, we'd want to come up here. You can just see the start of the silos. That's all full cover. Oh, this is just open road right here. And that's generally the direction we want to go. We also don't want to attack the UFO from that side, from this side, the side that we're on. But that's for later, because we're saving the UFO for last. For mysterious, unexplained reasons. Which I will explain later. Anyway, you don't really want to fan out like this. You really want to pick a direction and stick to it. So that's what I'm going to start doing now. Got it. Move it. We want to ferret out both the sectoids and the drones before we head to assault the UFO. Now, mm, the likelihood of contact on the next turn is it's possible. And I want Potato prepared for that, but he also needs to be in position in the first place. So I'm going to sprint him up to join up with the gang. Indication of direction, Sectoid's dead ahead. Shh. You hear that? If I was sensible, I would move Potato like into position. Like, I, I'd just move him. I, I might not even move him, to be honest. And then next turn, I would just move Mello up, uh, hoping for a good activation. Potato could fire his rocket, it'll be fine. Uh, we're not doing that. And it's fine. There's no need to worry. What we are doing here, though, by moving up like this, is exposing our left flank. This entire swathe of the map, we haven't discovered yet. And this is all hard cover. There's concealment behind all here. The drones could easily be even just lurking in this dark corner over here. So we really don't want to send anyone up to activate now that we've moved these two guys into a vulnerable position. Really, we don't want to have moved these guys up here at all, but I am, I am super fed up with this mission. Oh gosh, I'm like super fed up. So I am rolling through it as quickly as possible, remembering to steady aim and not overwatch with your Rocketeers. There is Meld right beside the UFO. That Meld is dead to me. The second that Meld decided to be anywhere near the UFO, I, I disavowed all knowledge of it. Melo continuing to move up in half cover, this could activate. Getting close to UFO, you can see the outline here. You can just about now see the outline of the barn. We want to really push through the barn and around to assault the UFO from this side. Now, as we can move up to this full cover, might as well. Now, this is actually a really poor position. This, Of, of the four times I've played this played this particular mission this is probably the worst position to be in because tractor tractor trailer barn they could even come all the way up here to have a sniper's nest in the barn we are attacking what is essentially a fortified position one of the most fortified positions you can get in XCOM 
and um, we've only got rookies at the moment who are in no position to do much of anything. That's why it's such a good I'm thing we've commander. brought friend, specialist rocketeer Potato. He's going to deal all the damage, do all the moves. Magical Driver is also here. He, he's, he's pretty cool too. Oh, my, my voice is going after doing all four recordings. And it's I'm just... It, it's not great. I want to sprint Gaurav up so he's at the front, but there's just too much possibility of an activation. But there's no good positions for him to be in anyway, so he's just going to move up as far as possible, then overwatch. Because again, we don't need to leave people in cover unless they really need to prepare like potato. So long as there aren't any active enemies. There is meld over here. It can only be right here. Prim oh no, no, no. That's that's not the edge of the map. It's, it's in this area. So we are going to start moving towards that. This is hard cover. This is good for Nero. The one potential banana skin is if the drones are in this undiscovered area here or around here, uh, which we'll we'll soon find out. They could still be right in that corner. I really doubt it. So sectoids have taken up a residence in the barn. Maybe they're just maybe they didn't come on the UFO. Maybe this is the sectoids farm. And we are just, you know, ruthlessly invading it with our literal shotguns. So this is some decent cover here, which we are unfortunately too far away from. I if Mello moves up to this tractor, it's got to activate. So Mello is pretty much going to stay put this turn. The one problem with assaulting the barn is that we have to do it head on this way forward. Because if we come any closer to this UFO, we'll activate whatever's inside it. And if the drones are inside the UFO, as well as what I know to be inside the UFO, then that's going to be a hard time. That leaves Potato Position to move up to confirmed. here. We need to creep him closer and closer so he has a range with this rocket. That rocket, once steadied, could probably go through those tractors. and go either side of the tractors. It's a decent rocket. Not the best rocket. It could be a worse rocket. Uh, there's, there's very little chance of Magical Driver activating anything by moving up to there. And Garav can continue catching up as can Tamerlane. Position confirmed. I've got my eyes on. More battle scanners would be really handy in this situation. We've only brought the one because I brought Potato instead of someone who I'd ordinarily give a battle scanner to. But as uh, troops are promoted, engine uh, there's two classes called Engineer and, well, you've already been introduced to Scout. They can intrinsically get a perk that gives them battle scanners by default. That's hard cover. That's, that's quite a good move if there's no if there's nothing activated around here, but there's so much, there's, there are so many places the drones could be hiding around here that moving up to here is a bad idea. Right, we are fine at the moment. I wasn't sure if I'd activated the drones at the same time there, but two sectoids in the barn, one just outside. Despite nobody having line of sight on them, if we wanted, well, it's just outside Potato's range. And moving to that great position is just outside his range as well. So we need sight on these sectoids. This is a, that's, that's a pretty poor activation, to be honest. They've retreated instead of rushed towards us. Where, where even is the meld? I thought the meld was over here. There it is. If I knew that the drones weren't right here, I would continue to rush Nero up so he would he could prepare the flank, he could grab the meld as well. But as it is As it is. Oh Tamalin has no movement whatsoever. I think Melo to move up to here is our best bet to start off with. Nobody's going to be on Overwatch. And indeed, 
There's a flank on. 68% chance to hit. The very first time I recorded this, Mello had such an amazing shot because the drone's activated. She hit a, a flying target, a flying target with an SMG on Overwatch and killed it dead instantly. As it is, she's really letting herself down now with this appearance. But you know, in an alternate universe, just imagine what could have been. We don't really have many other people who can get into firing positions. I don't want... Oh. Right, Trev can certainly get into firing position. It, it just depends on where we want him to go. If he moves up here, he's there's still one sectoid around here, is there not? He needs to get close to actually be able to hit anything. But to get close exposes him to getting flanked. He can come all the way over here. Uh, that could be a reasonable shout. It does waste run and gun, which will be on cooldown, and then we can't use it to take any other sectoids, though. We could just trust to luck and assume that Melo won't get shot out of full cover. Copy that. Which sounds like a perfectly good idea to me, so let's go. This is probably the best place for Potato to go. He can steady his rocket. He won't get fired upon. Trev's going to take out his pistol. His pistol has more range, that has a better effective range, I should say, than his shotgun. On Overwatch. Tamalay. We really need to start moving people up, so I'm just going to sprint them up behind Mellow, I think. Tamalay could, of course, use smoke, but I'd rather save the smoke Rolling in out. case it gets a bit more desperate than this. And Garav is, of course, way out of position because I'm not playing very well at all. On the move. He's just going to dash here and hope they come forward. Of course, Trev, with the initial smash of that window, that's made a noise. It could attract the sectoids out. It could attract the drones to us. That one is retreating. That one is danger close. But he's retreating as well. Who can he see? He's on Overwatch, that's not great. Of course, Sectoids also have these psychic attacks. Psy panic, that would have just simply forced Mel to panic. But she has a heart of iron. <laughs> Here it comes. Here it comes. There's one way to deal with little low health mobs on Overwatch. When you've got the big man with a big rocket. Don't say boom. Oh, Easy. Except you didn't actually kill that one. He killed one of them and that's what matters. Anyway, this he is actually out of cover as well now. So that was, that, that was an even more perfect rocket than it would have been if he killed this one. Because now we have the chance to retrieve the weapon fragments and the body from him. If Melo can hit it. Uh, because it's on Overwatch. It's a bit awkward for everyone else to hit, but Gaurav and Magical Trevor and probably Nero. Nope, not Nero. That's fine. I'd rather Melo get the kill anyway. Like I was saying, I would rather Magical Trevor get the kill anyway. Like I was saying, I'd rather Gaurav get the kill anyway. And because Gaurav gets two shots, he now gets another action. He can move up, but what I'm going to use him to do is overwatch for this sectoid coming back. Because with that rocket, that sectoid has far less cover to advance to. And can't even advance to this wall of the barn as it's just been obliterated. Now this, I'm just having a quick look. It is a risky move. If there are drones here, our entire team is in a lot of trouble. On the other hand, there's Meld there. Easy as you like. Next turn, Nero will gobble up the Meld. Maybe this turn. <laughs> well, he, he can't. He can't um, click. 
to collect the meld this turn, he can move right up to it so he has a full range of movement next turn. It's good cover, I'm going to do it. He can potentially flank next turn as well. Tamerlane has the opportunity to... Um, I think it's worth moving Tamerlane up. It's not. The other sectoid might be on Overwatch. I'm not going to move him up too far. In fact, I'm going to move him all the way over here. He's not going to be on Overwatch. But we'll have a bigger cone of fire. So it's just the sectoid lead left. That's the forklift's going to explode. Because that that's what forklifts do. Meld. Five meld. Nero can get in close with a flashbang if necessary. I think Trev... Oh, he's one square off getting a flank on this sectoid. So I think we're just going to largely move in, take pot shots, make sure we can't get flanked. Well, let's, let's move up to check that Nero can get the flashbang on him first. And that, that Nero doesn't activate the drones as well. So easy flashbang, no drones so far. Where are the drones then on this map? Of course, they could be behind the barn. More likely, I'd say, they're on this quarter of the map. The UFO and behind it. I'd almost rather they just came and rushed us, to be honest. Now, this forklift has blown up. It probably won't blow up again. However, not going to risk that. In fact, Melo actually can't shoot this turn anyway. needs to reload. So there's no point putting her in a firing position where she can receive fire from sectoids. Unless we want Melo to be the tank. Uh, we don't. Nero's got more health. Moving. So you can just reload this time. Magical Trevor. First of all, hmm, what I want Potato for, I, I don't care about Potato shooting this. I want Potato to prepare a, his second rocket, the Shredder rocket, in case we run into the drones. Like I said, I think the drones are more likely to come from this side. That's why I'm going to move Potato here. Position confirmed. That was stupid. A better place to move Potato would have been in here. Because moving up here, we could have potentially activated any drones around here. Is this very... I'm very good at playing XCOM a second after I've made all my moves. I think that's the best description of me. I think Garav is obviously going to be the most likely to hit this shot. It's still going to be a, a very... Yeah, 33%. Tamalin's in the only hard cover he can get. Uh, so, hold the flashbang, take your pot shots. Would rather Tamalin gets as a rookie, but I don't think any of these are going to hit. There's no reason not to take them, though. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So Nero can now reload as we prepare for a drone incursion. Uh, Trev can move up as well. And reload the pistol just in case. Because drones don't have feet, they can't. We can't hear their footsteps, and I just still have no idea where they are. Potato is now in a good position. It was a bad idea to move there because of the potential activations, but now that he is there, that's a good position for him to cover this entire field with his shredder rocket. There we go. That's the that's the range of cover we have from this position. You could even fire this way if we were to get so severely flanked. Obviously, problem this side. We just there's a solution here, and that is hope against hope that they're not on this side. So we're going to send everyone on a wild, everyone apart from potato, of course, on a wild journey around the side. Headed there now. I might leave Mello over Headed here as well now. as a spotter. Roger that. Scanning. Everyone else, I get ready, matter. ready. Waiting for a wild ride? Oh, it's, it's been a long day. And all I've been doing is playing XCOM. It's just been the same mission over and over. Uh, Nero, no need to move just yet until everyone's ready to move. You, you never ever 
want to activate any pod with your squad's last move. The drones are over there. No need to go on a big jaunt around the barn. Actually, were those the drones? I didn't hear a noise. It probably wasn't the drones. That's probably something else. What I'm going to do if that's something else at the moment is actually start moving Nero over. This is what we've been saving the battle scanner for. As it is, Tamale okay. and uh, Trev. Position confirmed. Keep moving through the barn. Because ultimately, to assault the UFO, we want to move through the barn and then down to this wall anyway. I'll tell you why once we've dealt with the drones. Okay. That leaves that position for Gaurav. I'm, I'm going to play this back in editing and realise that. It was the drones I heard, and now I'm just sitting here like an idiot. But I mean, you might think I'm being a little overcautious, but if you really think that, then you clearly haven't seen the last video where this exact same setup, like a pile of drones, oh, I say a pile of drones, three drones. It was only three drones. They they should have killed one of our troops. As it is, Katie is gravely wounded, and who knows if she'll ever be the same again. Right, gonna move Nero okay. up to here. I want to land a battle scanner right in the middle of the UFO. It might not be far enough. Next turn I'm gonna risk going this close. Sorry about that. Potato continue steadying. Um, this is just the most utterly cursed recording I can I've I Position can remember confirmed. ever making. Drones, that was perfect comedic timing for you to be hiding behind the barn. I'm quite disappointed. I just ignored my own rules about moving with the last. There's something out there. Yeah, that's definitely not the drones. The drones could still be anywhere. I am more concerned about the drones than the actually very dangerous alien that awaits us in here. In fact, I'm going to move Nero all You're the way up to here. Either. As you can see, he revealed a tiny slither of the UFO on this side. It's a bit of a risk, but one that should make for a better battle. Scanner right in the center. Dr. Inst, tell us about this discovery. Meetings can't be right. If they were, <gasps> there's what? a being of almost pure energy. So the drones couldn't see us, but as soon as we threw a battle scanner, the drones activated, which is a bit weird. This in here is what we have to worry about. This is called the Outsider. They are the protectors, the pilots, the whatever of the UFOs. But this is why we've got Potato in this position. Because Potato... Papa Bear Potato, our protector, is going to rocket these guys and they're going to die instantly. Rocketeers are the number one way from early game to end game to deal with drones. And that rocket has gone massively off course. So we're actually in some trouble. He took out one. Not bad. Nero's in reasonable cover, so he should be fine. They can't flank Potato. Mellow will come round here. Okay. However, now these guys have been shredded. Which means they take more damage. As you can see, airborne hardened. Flying targets, minus 30% chance to hit. These guys need to make their way back round. Gaurav can make it all the way to this window, which is worthwhile. If we're still shooting at the drones next turn, Garav's in a perfect position. In the sniper's nest. 38% sh I mean, there's nothing else to do but take your shots. Adjusting there's no aim. point in overwatching. It'll be, as, it'll be harder to hit them on overwatch than it will just to shoot them out the air. Tamerlane probably can't see them from there. 
So he is just going to move up. Is there any good half cover? There isn't. He's just going to move. He won't be able to see them, but he'll be able to move to see them next turn. Trev likewise isn't going to be able to hit someone. He isn't going to be able to get close enough to hit with his shotgun without leaving himself in a lot of danger and potentially activating that outsider. See, there's that now expired meld. Look how close it is. We were never getting that meld. Not without a far better team. Trev's never going to hit anything on Overwatch with a shotgun, so he can just come to you and Overwatch anyway. He's got nothing better to do. They are going full out for the flank on Potato. Which is fine with me. It means they're not shooting at me this turn. Potato can move. These guys can't Overwatch. Although they are moving quite far away, they're going to be quite difficult to hit. The outsider is not going to move until he's activated. So now that we know where he is, this battle scanner will, will expire next turn, but it's not going to be difficult to remember. He's there. So Potato, can he move back in here to full cover? He can. On my way. No reason not to take that move. And we can keep taking pot shots. They can't get a flank on us from there. Melo can't see them. She can Moving. come over here. You can only see one target, so might as well take your shots. And again, this is just going to be volume of fire. Except we aren't right at the end of the mission, so we're not going to suicide into them. And they're shredded, so a single hit on them should kill them. I'd quite like Nero to get a kill, but he's not in a position to do so this turn. And again, Trev, not much to do. He can start moving in to prepare for the breach on the UFO. He's going to be our main guy for the breach. And of course, Garav would have been in the perfect position if they charged us. They didn't. They went for the flank instead. There's no flanks available for this drone to go for. He's just going to come straight for us. So Garav, with no better places to sit, he's just going to stay up there. Here comes a shot, surely. Nope, they're just continuing to move in. So I'm going to take the shot with Potato last here. If we need to at all. Because he is... Can he be flanked? I don't, I'm not sure how far drones can move. I don't think Melo can be flanked, but she's out of ammo anyway, so Moving might as well withdraw. Position. She has the mobility to reload and come back and shoot in the next turn. It's almost close enough for Trev to run right up to it and have a go, but that leaves him in danger. We're not doing that this time. Nero, the worst aim of anyone here on this mission with 55, yeah. Have a shot. Uh, potato moves back to there. You can still get the shot away just around the corner. Finally. So we are now just left with the now shrouded and shadow outsider. So essentially with an outsider, the outsider is easily the most fearsome enemy we'll have had to face in these early in these early game missions. Because they have like 10 health, they've got a plasma carbine, they've got good aim, they're really quick, they will crit you out of half cover. You have essentially what you want to do is deal with them in a single turn. The best way to do that is to come round to the doors of a UFO, stack up on the doors, and then breach. So you're right there, you can run in flank no matter where the outsider goes. On this map, although the drones did open that door, so even if this map wasn't bugged, we couldn't do that just now. This map is bugged, and aliens can see out through this door even if it's shut. The best way to breach this particular UFO on this crashed map, on this farm, is to come all the way around the side of the map so you can get onto the roof, because as you can see, it's kind of dug into the side of a hill, dug into the dirt, so you can get on the top of the UFO, jump down each side, flank the outsider and win. We're not doing that, we're just going to stack up on this wall because it will take a lot less time. It, Commander. We've, still got mo we've still got our grenades, we've still got our smoke grenade. Position confirmed. It would take it would take an error from me personally not to um, have a successful takedown of the outsider here. 
Now instantly, with as you've heard throughout the mission, I've said we're leaving the UFO for last. That is because it, this is an outsider. It's, a com it's called a command pod. I don't know if it's actually called a command pod or if that's just that's what people call it. But if you run into a command pod, as soon as they see any of your soldiers, Solid copy. they put out a call for help. Emergency, emergency, craft under attack, leader under attack, Moving. your flight assistants under attack, your cabin crew under attack, and that calls every pod on the map towards them. Which, you saw, you saw how we struggled with the drones, and we weren't ever in much danger there with the Got drones, because we had good cover, we just... We had enough space to keep falling back when necessary. Imagine if we didn't have that, and we had to face the sectoids at the same time, and the upcoming outsider. Potato's going to have to sprint, he can't afford to reload at the moment. Although if he doesn't reload, he is literally useless, because he's got no rockets left, he doesn't have a sidearm. So he will have to reload next turn. Heading to that location. Come get some. Mello can continue moving up. So this is essentially putting all our eggs in one basket here. In that we're coming from the same side. That's not ideal. But how long? I, I'm looking at the voice recording. It's fa on 36 minutes. Coming up to 37 minutes. A lot of that will... I'll say a lot of it. About 30 seconds of that will be cut out. So... We don't want to take anyone in this. We don't want to put anyone in this position because they'll be able to see around the corner. That'll activate the outsider. That might not necessarily be the case for this corner because there's a little bit of hard cover here, and it's over here. So what we're going to do actually is activate by moving Gaurav to here because he's the best shot. And if it doesn't activate, great, he's in position. He can steady his aim and prepare for the actual activation. If not, then he's a good position to take a shot anyway. And then Trev is going to come, rod and gun flank and um, so we should hopefully be able to finish it off anyway that's still in a few turns time because not everyone is in position yet so if Garav can move to there ready to take that position similarly Nero it's going to cut this corner and see a bit more into the craft but we know exactly where the outsider is I know that move is fine potato I'm on it, Commander. keep rolling of course, Potato is one of our most accurate troopers on the mission. He needs to We're be as a rocketeer, to and he's got the laser sight, so he's not. He's, he's probably our second most valuable trooper in this situation behind Magical Trevor. Uh, we're not perfectly ready for the breach, but it doesn't matter. He's run towards us. That's brilliant. That's perfect. Because what that means is that Trev, because I I did exactly this. Like the first recording, he doesn't even have to run and gun to get to there. And then you have Nero who can also flank. And then Tamalin can't, Melo can round the other side. This is an, this is a dead uh, outsider with a perfect breach. Magical Trevor, he might kill it in one. I'd rather he didn't because he needs to share around the kills. Wonderful. He was listening. Nero can come in. Let's just go right up to him. Make sure we hit it. 92% chance. <laughs> Another day. Another successful operation. Another successful operation. We need to continue immediately. So I can just end this recording and finish with this mission once for all. This is our fourth run through it. Our fourth. Or our third. Because, um one of the missions I didn't get far enough but all of these missions have gone exactly like this they've all been perfect let's hope all of these Mwah. operations go as smoothly as this one did thank you Dr. Enst and so there we go kills on everyone apart from Mello but this is not so long war so the experience needed to level up is lessened so despite not getting a kill Mello got XP from being taken on the mission so she's leveled up as well that's pretty much perfect to be honest and then um, I'll, I'll deal with uh, the Lance Corporal promotions just now. Magical Trevor is an assault. He's an assault with relatively high will. I earmarked Magical Trevor as a f potentially a future psychic. So there's three options. They're all good. 
but they all depend on specific builds. Steadfast is what I'm taking on Magical Trevor. It's never panicking, essentially. And that's pretty great. It's not so great on lower difficulties like we're playing on, but on Impossible, for example, that this is amazing. And it's pretty much what you pick every time. I'm picking it on normal mode because it gives them an extra five will as well. Uh, like, see you, how you've got a choice of three perks. Like, the weaker options will give you increased stat bonuses or what are perceived to be the weaker options. You've also got Flush, which is a highly accurate shot which will force an enemy out of cover. That is really useful in a lot of situations. Uh, I wouldn't say it's necessarily that useful on an assault, but you definitely want some flush in your squad. Because, like, say, say Nero with his 94% chance to kill. Say he was the last guy. And this 94% chance needed to do that one damage. And that's, that's a 6% chance that someone... It's not just a 6% chance that you missed the shot. It's a 6% chance that someone on your team is going to die and is gone forever. So flush would turn that into a 100% shot... 100% chance to kill and save the mission and that's great just not a magical Trevor the best thing generally for assaults is close combat specialist it's gives you an automatic shot a free shot a free action against anyone with it who moves within four tiles and this is pretty great for example if we gave magical Trevor this we could move him right up to a sectoid so that the sector is flanked and the sectoid runs, Magical Trevor gets a free shot. He could do that when he flank. He could be flanking like five different guys. They could all start running, and Magical Trevor could get a free shot and kill all of them without even taking like a manual shot. It's very good. We'll be taking it on our future assaults. But Magical Trevor, future psychic, he's taken steadfast. Or maybe a future officer, who knows? Potato, I can't remember. Oh, yes, there is one choice here for a rocketeer. You've got covering fire. Which can be quite good if you're building an Overwatch build, but Overwatch build depends on the Opportunist perk, which we'll get to later. Uh, again, Rapid Reaction depends on an Overwatch build, and you're not building anything to do with Overwatch with a Rocketeer, because they don't get Opportunist. These two are useless perks. Heat Warheads does 50% more damage to robots. Robots are the, the... Are there any flying enemies that aren't robots? And your Rocketeer is like almost specifically built to deal with flying enemies. You want Heat Warheads. See Potato's rocket that went off course there. If he had Heat Warheads, he still would have killed all those drones. Despite the rocket going so far off course. And we've also got a promotion to Gaurav. Now, Gaurav, this is a guy we're building for an Overwatch build. So he is going to take covering fire. Which means that you, usually, if you set a guy on Overwatch... Uh, this explanation's gone on very long, hasn't it? But anyway, if you set a guy to be on Overwatch, typically, like, if Gaurav, for example, was being Overwatched by a Sectoid, the Sectoid would have a shot on him if Gaurav moved, but if Gaurav stayed still and had a shot at the Sectoid, the Sectoid would not get a free Overwatch shot. If the Sectoid had covering fire, it would be able to take a free Overwatch shot if Gaurav fired at him. I hope that's quite clear. Um, it's probably not. Executioner is good. You take it on other builds of infantry, but in the early game, Overwatch infantry is king. Steadfast is the exact same perk we just gave to Magical Trevor, but it's not as relevant to Gaurav, especially in place of, for example, an Executioner. It, it's such a vital perk for, like, well, I think it's called Executioner infantry, which, you know, it's in the name. Covering fire is very important for Overwatch infantry. Steadfast is just a bit too far out of place. We'll deal with these rookie promotions later. This was a UFO mission. Oh god, this is exhausting, isn't it? It's exhausting for me. I can't imagine what it would be like listening to this bullshit. Anyway, we get extra resources because it's a UFO. We've got 14 Illyrium, 11 alien alloys, 5 weapon fragments, 5 golden melds. It's a shame we don't have 4 of anything, but we've got 2 dam we've got damaged things. I'm going to talk about those in a little bit. I might even save them for another video because this video has gone on for very long. Um, so I'm going to cut this off here. I'm going to decide what I'm going to do then I'll be back. 
Okay, I'm going to have to talk a little bit about resources because I'm about to sell them on the... I still can't believe Dr. Vaughan expects our troops to try to bring one of those things back Central here Officer in Archon. Is this really alive. the time? Because we're about Several to sell our members of the council have expressed an interest in acquiring some of the artifacts we've recovered. I'm trying However, to sell it to be them. careful in choosing what items we release. The research team may not have discovered their true value yet. Anyway, we can gloss over most of this. So, anyway... Uh, where to start with? Obviously most things in XCOM cost money, but then there's a resource that goes with it. Uh, not so much in the early game, as you've seen with uh, the buildings, uh, the facilities we're building, the weapons we're building. Um, we haven't really built any weapons yet, actually. Uh, but um, everything in the end game, particularly, starts to cost like exorbitant amounts of like alien alloys and delirium. Um, so anyway, most of these resources are, they're, they're extraterrestrial, so the only real source is from UFOs. And crashed UFOs give you less resources than those that landed of their own volition. Uh, as you can see, we've got damaged flight computers and a damaged power source. They'd be... We'll monitor that contact, but I oh, God. God, it's, it's been a long day. Uh, these would be far more useful to us, uh, complete rather than damaged. All they're good for now is for selling, that's why we're here. But then that is an extra 100 bucks, 100 space bucks on the table. All they are is like just cash. Well, I mean, it, it explicitly says anything with a green thing beside it, just sell it immediately. Um, as for the rest of the resources, this video's gone on a bit too long, so I'll give you the quickest summary. So, alloys are for building anything metal. Weapon fragments, building researching weapons. Meld is um, magic sci-fi stuff. Illyrium is magical power and bodies are for cutting up. Uh, there we go. Sorted, let's scan on. See, this is why we researched xenobiology first, because four sectoid corpses in the long run are worth absolutely nothing compared to getting our research off and running just now. And before I dispatch these items, I'm going to quickly look at research. It will take 17 days with 10 scientists. Scientists speed up research. We'll see if um, it speeds up the research like noticeably I right now. Already it does. That one, that one scientist already has already got the snowball rolling. The and Dr. Inst is very appreciative. Nugget's back. Thank goodness. This is our first fusion generator. All the buildings, the first time you build them, have a lovely little cutscene. Power generator complete. So that is our power generator. So now we've got 27 out of 38 power. We don't have the money to build anything else at the moment. We could start building workshops, of course. Actually, I um, want to build a lab, but you need science more. Laboratories speed up your research, as do scientists, but you need scientists. The more scientists you have, the more labs you can build. The faster it all goes. You need to start the snowball early. S One sec. XCOM is dying a death on me today, but I refuse to have it all corrupt from here on out. We're going to push through this. Um, I want to build another satellite uplink there. We need 200 bucks for that. We could cancel the satellite we're already building. That would give us enough, so we're going to go do that now. Our current satellite uplink facilities because we are need the uplink in place before... To allow for new satellite exactly. Bradford, I hear you. I'm so angry that I'm calling you Bradford and not your real name Archon. But we now have the power. And building these satellite links beside each other gives you an extra satellite. Similarly, building these labs beside each other will give us extra um, research benefits. Essentially, you want to build everything adjacent to one another. Everyone back to action. Right, again, one thing, this lab is going to speed up our research. There's nine days on alien weapons just now. A new place for Dr. Ince to hang out. I've already forgotten how long that actually was on that research. I think it was nine days, it's now eight days. Brilliant. That one, that... 
Oh no. So this is the third type of mission. We've had abductions, we've had UFO missions. We thank God we haven't had a terror mission yet. This is the council who will appoint us to do specific missions. And they'll give us target extraction, they'll give us bomb disposal. Uh, target extraction missions aren't too bad. And then look at how much money we're getting and we're getting engineers. They're pretty great. Excellent. As long as they're not too difficult. Sometimes they're the most difficult missions in the game though. So, mixed bag. This is also where we get the DLC missions from. But no DLC mission just yet. So I'm going to gear up a team. And we will be off to um, extract a UN official was it? A, U a UN official was it? From the middle of an alien attack in front. I'm going to gear up a squad. And I'll be right back to you. Okay, so we're back and we have a team. It's a relatively experienced team because despite the area of operations being unknown and claiming that no intel is available, council missions, we can tell from the phraseology of the council missions which map and who we're going to rescue. I have, I have a feeling, I suspect we'll be saving a certain Mr. Banksy Van Dorn. Don't quote me on that. As such, I've set up my team for this particular map, uh, still to do all the promotions of course, Ray the Great, massive aim, immobile, useless in everything else, he has to be a sniper. A quick double check of his infantry, his infantry did get reset for whatever reason. Since he's going to be staying at the back out of the way, he gets a laser sight and a med kit. Mistra, in every single game I play, Mistra is always a scout, and he has 15 mobility. You can't really blame me in this case for continuing this proud scouting tradition. And of course, his... I don't know why it resets the inventory when you promote them. He had two flashbangs. Originally, I gave everyone medkits. Like, literally every single person a med kit, because that's because it would suit the map I think is coming up. Um, <laughs> I've already forgotten. Right. As a ghoul, he has quite good mobility, but not really high mobility. He's got decent will. He'd make a good assault, but what I want from Azgul and of people of decent will is I want a medic. Now medics are not just healers, although that is what their initial perk is. It gives them a free med kit, so even if I didn't take a med kit with Azgul, he'd have a free one and he could use... And Let me start again. Given that he's taken... He's off. Calm down, Mick. I'm, I'm recording this all in a row, and it's just gotten to me. I'm recording the next episode immediately after this as well. But, okay, Azago is going to take three medkits. He gets one medkit from Field Medic, and then he can take two medkits in a single slot, again because of Field Medic. He's also going to take a smoke grenade, because medics in Long War aren't just healers. They're kind of utility players. Um, in time, he'll be able to... I think even maybe the next rank, he'll be able to get a free smoke grenade on the mission as well. He gets perks to make his smoke grenades better. He'll eventually get a perk that allows him to take double the number of grenades in any given slot, so we could take along two flashbangs or something similar. What I'm doing with all my troops now, instead of taking SMGs, I'm taking assault carbines because they give an accuracy bonus as well as a slight mobility bonus. So we've got Private, Epiphanous and Shamed with their carbines. I wanted to take more Privates, but this is, this could potentially be a dodgy, a, a dodgy, a dodgy, a dodgy map for us. I cannot remember what I was going to make Yosef. I think it was, no, it was just, it was just plain infantry actually. Another infantry, because of his high aim, 
it's his high mobility and reasonable will. Will's good for infantry. Infantry make good uh, leaders, make good officers. I could see Yosef becoming an officer in future. So he's just going to retain assault rifle with a laser sight and a smoke grenade. I wanted to take a gunner on this mission, but I felt as a ghoul was going to be important as a medic. I definitely wanted to scout. I definitely wanted a sniper, and it became a toss-up. There's nobody. There's nobody I really wanted to make a gunner. I've one of these guys might become a gunner in time. That's why I'm taking them. So we'll see as we depart for a rescue mission in the south of France. We're Francis in Marseille, mission request. mustard country, and we'll see if this XCOM team can really cut it tonight. This is a rescue mission where we have to locate the VIP, protect the VIP at all costs. This it was ex the exact map I thought it was. I've prepared well, so next time you can join XCOM, MCOM and I for Operation First Breath where we attempt to rescue the UN VIP at Banksy Van Dorn. I'll see you next time.